In this video, I will be showcasing my high tank setup and showing you how to build one yourself. I meant to do this sooner, but I just never got around to it, so now the wood is gray, but that doesn't really matter. It still works great, and I can still show you how I did it. So, first things first, I'll show you how to set up the tank itself, and then how to build this structure here. First, let's look at the tank. So this is just your typical 18 gallon storage bin from Walmart. I was going to show the sticker, but it appears to have rotted away. So what I did was I got some tank parts and I simply just cut holes in the bottom of this bin and installed them like I would install them in a tank. So I have two fill valves here. This one fills to about the halfway mark probably a little lower actually, and then this one fills all the way to the top. So that way I can have a half flush as well as a full flush. Now you also want a handle with a metal rod on it because it takes a lot of force to lift this flapper with 18 gallons of water on top of it. And you also want a flapper that is fairly stiff because if you just go out and buy a new flapper from the store, it will actually get sucked down into the flush valve and you'll have to manually reach your hand in there and pull it back out. I know that from experience. So you want a hard frame flapper, one that's not rubbery like this, but this particular flapper is old so it's a little bit stiff and it works great. So also you want to make sure that it is a water saver because otherwise it will get stuck open and it will drain the entire tank and you can't really do anything about that. So I know you guys have probably seen in some of my videos that the flapper gets stuck open. So it was even getting stuck open being a water saving flapper so I put some washers on it and that seems to work. Also, you may want a string attached to the handle because it is going to be pretty high up when it is in service. So this is it from underneath. It's just got a standard flush valve and fill valve attachments and this right here is a two inch adapter it's got a female threading on one side and a I guess whatever you call this flat connection on the other side so I just screw that to this piece here and that is all you need to build the tank now let's look at the bowl connection. So this is what I use right here. It is the metal dry lock bracket from a Kohler Cimarron Class 6 toilet. You'll want to remember that name because you might want to look it up later. So this has two holes right here and a hole right there just like a toilet tank as you can see over here. It's got the two holes there as well as the flush valve hole in the middle. Pretty standard for a toilet. So this is very convenient because if I want to test a toilet with six inches between the tank bolts, such as this one, I can slide the bolts, bolts all the way to the end of each hole. And if I want to test one that is five or five and a half inches, I can slide the bolts to the inner parts of those holes. And if I want to test one that's like nine inches, I can sometimes hook the bolts on the outside of the bracket, but that takes a little bit of work. So if you want to get one of these, it is a Kohler Cimarron Class 6 dry lock bracket. And since it's Kohler, it's probably pretty expensive, but I just found it. So that is what I use. Then this little piece right here is the bottom of a flush valve. I used a hacksaw and cut the flush valve so it is just the threaded part. I have one right here. You'd want to use a Fluid Master flush valve because that little piece right there does not connect to the tube. If you look at that, you can just stick a hacksaw right between the tube and that bottom part and you can just cut it off like I did. So that's what you want for that. And I just used some regular tank bolts to stick them in here and I put a seal on here so that it can hold a gasket better and then I'll just put that on the toilet and it's good to go. If you want to test one with a three inch flush valve, 
just put this gasket on top of the three inch gasket and put this piece on top and it'll work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook that up and show you how it works. The high tank is all set up. It is connected with the pipe and the hoses. Right here I have supply lines connected to my garden hoses. If you don't have one of these and you don't know how to make one, I have a video on that that I will link in the description so that you guys can set up your toilets to fill directly from the valves. So this pipe is connected to both of the couplings. That's how it will look when it's installed. Now let's look at the frame. So it's a pretty simple build actually. I have eight two by fours. One of them goes this way and one of them goes this way because if you only used one, you could push it and it would sway back and forth and loosen all the nails and fall over and you would not want that. So I doubled the two by fours and that way you can push it whatever way you want and it will not fall over. So I also put in cross beams to help with the swaying. I put one in the front here. I put a few of them down here. I'm not sure why I put an extra one up here, but I guess extra support doesn't hurt. So you want to put all of those across and I like to screw them in from the sides so that it does not go directly into the end of the grain. Now up here I use two on each side because this is directly supporting the 18 gallon tank and you don't want that to break. So I put in some screws down here and up here and I'm making sure that that does not fall down. Now to adjust the height of the tank, since you don't want to cut the pipe, I just use leftover scrap wood and bricks to adjust the height of that. Since some of my toilets are comfort height, some are standard height, and I even have a baby toilet. So that is how that is built. I will build a little structure out of blocks that looks like this, and I'll include a picture of that at the end just so you can see the general shape from the top. Now let's give this a flush. It puts some power into these toilets. One thing I forgot to mention is that you do not want to cover the tube on the toilet, on the flush valve I mean. This tube right here has to be open, but basically what happens is you have a stream of water flowing through the pipe, and if you immediately cut it off, there's still going to be water in the pipe. And normally it would all just drain down through the toilet, which I have made quite dirty. But if you block the pipe, there will be nowhere for the air to enter the pipe and the water will stay in there. So when you try to lift the flapper, it'll have all the weight of this water pulling down on it and you will break the chain of your flapper or your flush handle. So you absolutely want to have an open tube at the top. You'll want to put an extension on it like I did so that that doesn't happen. So that piece right there is just a rubber tube and you can find that at Lowe's or Home Depot. So anyway, I must give credit to CGL Plumbing for coming up with the bin design. I don't know if he was the first one to use it, but he is the one who told me about it. I originally used a five gallon bucket, but this is way, way better. So thank you CGL for your idea. Anyway, that is all for this video. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and turn on notifications. It helps my channel a lot and I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video. And real quick, here's that picture. And that is how you build a high tank.